Welcome to Victory Church. Today is our worship service number 175, February 2nd, 2020. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for the joy that you gave us, Lord. We are happy in your presence, Lord. You make us happy, Lord. In the name of Jesus, receive the songs that we have for you. Amen. He's a good, good father. Amen. Amen. Heard a thousand stories of a wife. They think you are alive, but I've heard the tender whispers of a love in the dead of night. And I tell that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. Only you can provide Cause you know just what we need Before we say a word You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am
Tells me I will never marry. 
treasure up Am I more than just in sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know talk to him what is your most important concern right now my friend what is the number one thing that you are worried about do me a favor just to speak it out and give it to the Lord come on tell him tell him exactly how you feel Lord I am so worried about tell him Give it to God. He doesn't want you to carry the burdens. Get rid of those burdens. Just by trusting in Him. He is faithful, you know. All your life the Lord has been so, so good. With every breath that you are able say to him I will sing to you Lord. 
all the goodness of God. Because you, Lord, are so faithful to us, Lord. And here we are, Lord, so grateful for one more day of life, one more week, Lord. But we can start in your presence. And we love you, Lord, with all our heart. We give you everything, everything to you, Lord. Our worries, our concerns, our sadness, our frustrations, our temptations, our pain, our suffering. We give it to you, Lord. We don't want it. Take it away, Lord. Remove the burdens. Remove the pain. Remove the sadness. Remove the frustration. Remove the frustration and pain. Remove the bitterness. Remove, Lord, the lack of forgiveness. Remove everything that is wrong in our hearts. Remove it right now. And fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, right now. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands, lift up your hands, close your eyes, and receive the power of God coming to you. The Holy Spirit coming down in your, pre in your presence, God. In your presence, Lord God. We are in your presence. Pour down all of your power, Lord. Restore us. Transform our minds. Transform our souls. Fill our bodies in such a way, Lord, that we can even experience the heaviness of your anointing, the Holy Spirit. Heal us, Lord. Heal our emotions. Heal our minds. Heal our hearts. Heal our bodies. And we believe, Lord, that you are changing us. You are changing everything within us, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. We worship you today, Lord, with all our hearts, because you deserve to be worshipped. Your goodness is running after me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Say with me All together All my life you have been Faithful. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God, you have been so, so good. You have been faithful, Lord. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness. God. Your goodness, Lord. Your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship our Lord through our offerings. Whether it is through an envelope here in church or online. Let's give to God what belongs to Him. Thank you, Lord, for all your provision. We love you, Lord. The time has come for us to receive God's Word. We have praised Him, adored Him, and worshipped Him. Now we will hear a powerful message that our Lord has poured down into our pastor's heart. Let's get ready to receive the inspiration that we need this week to go into battle with faith in our Lord Jesus. Let's give a hand to our Lord God and all together say, one, two, three, victory. Yay, Lord. I invite you to join us today in this message, God's Plan. And please go to the website and download the bulletin. Here in the church, we all have our bulletin. Today is an interesting message. It's part of the 
answer to people's question, what's the, the plan of God for my life? I want to know. I want to know what's that plan. I want to know. Well, today I'm going to share with you scriptures that are really, really powerful scriptures. I want you to, uh, today the message is going to be a little bit different. I want you to know this. Usually, you know, you receive a lot of nuggets, information, important principles and topics. And today we will review some of these things. But in the middle of the message, in some point, I'm going to start praying. I want you to hear what I said. In some point during the message, I will start praying, and the prayer will be uh, based on notes and slides that you will see. That prayer that you will hear from me today, it's an example of how we can pray every day for His will. So the message is different today. Get ready for this. The first scripture comes from Psalm 40, verses 4 and 5, the first section of the scripture, and it says, Great blessings belong to those who trust in the Lord. You have done many amazing things. You have made great plans for us. Too many to list. Great blessings belong to those who trust in the Lord. If you trust in the Lord, you have that promise. And you will see the result of that promise day after day. Week after week, month after month, year after year, the blessings are going to come upon you. And the blessing comes just because you trust in the Lord. Trusting in God is the key in discovering God's plan because He had He had made great plans for us. He had. And there are too many to list. In every situation where you are and you are thinking, what is God's plan? Is it possible there is no plan right now? No, 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 no. That's not true. There is a plan. There is a plan and he has something special for you because he always does amazing things. Amazing things. One example, you know, of those weird things that you see in the kingdom of God in the story of the people of Israel <laughs> It happened precisely with the descendants of Abraham. As you know, Abraham, father of faith, had one particular son, Isaac, who was married to Rebekah. Well, she was pregnant and she had two kids in her womb. Well, guess what happened? One of these two will be the one carrying the legacy. And they didn't know which one will be normally will be the firstborn. But listen to this. Before the two sons were born, God told Rebekah, the older son will serve the younger, so that the boy he wanted will be chosen because of God's own plan. So the rule was the firstborn will be the new leader of the tribe. Well, guess what happened here? The Lord is saying, no, this time is not that way. It will be the younger one, the one who leads. And you are talking here about Isa and Jacob. You know that throughout his life, Jacob encountered many things and he messed up big time, several times. But he learned the lesson and eventually he fought against the Lord. And then is when his name was changed to Israel. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel, which is one of the founders of the nation of Israel. Guess what happened here? There was... A traditional, a tradition act of giving the power to the firstborn. And the Lord said, no. No, in this particular case, I have a plan. I want you to hear this this sentence, my friend. In this particular case, I have a plan. Whatever you are going through in this particular case, the Lord has a plan. The Lord always has a plan. There is nothing that is uh, a surprise for the good Lord. Oh, I didn't know that. No. (laughs) No, he always has a plan. So what is his plan for your life? We will discover that. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, Paul is writing special things to the members of this church. And this is what he says. 
We teach wisdom to people who are mature. We speak God's secret wisdom. God planned this wisdom. He planned it before the world began. Way before the world began, the Lord already was planning everything. How the universe will evolve. How Adam and Eve will mess up. How Noah will come with the solution for the ark. Before you were born, the Lord was planning many things. And one of these things is the wisdom. The wisdom of God was planned. And he has that wisdom somehow like a secret, you know. But this wisdom is being revealed through the teaching. Obviously, people that are immature don't get it. Some people are not able to understand many things from the scripture. And it's because they are little it's normal for a new believer, someone that is just starting in, in church and with the reading of the Bible, that that person will not understand everything, but at least it starts, right? One step at a time, one step at a time. By the way, if you guys, church members, you cannot come on Tuesday night for whatever reason, watch the study of every, every Tuesday. There are many wonderful things there being said. You need to take your time to study and learn because we teach wisdom to people who are mature. In other words, the ones that are not mature, we won't teach them. Why? Because they don't care. Like a little one. Correct? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Oh, this scripture is powerful. It says, no one has ever seen, no one has ever heard, no one has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. He has something prepared for those who love him. You notice that it doesn't say for those who the Lord loves. You notice that? Because the Lord, the Lord loves everybody. But he has special plans. Say with me, special plans. Special plans, special plans for those who love him. Those who love him. You know, I say this all the time. I cannot wait to be in heaven one day. I know his plan is not for me to, to departure right away. I know that's not his plan. But that doesn't change the fact that I want to be in heaven. And you know why? Because I love him. Because he is my life. He is the love of my life. There is nobody... Better than him in my eyes. I love my parents, my grandparents, my wife, my children, my grandkids. I love my church members. I love everybody, but nobody is more special than the Lord. I love him with all of my heart. He is my life. He is my son. He is my son. He is my day. He is my night. He is my pillow. He is my water. He is my bread. He is my everything. I love him and I want you to love him because he loves you so much and he wants your heart has, the Lord has prepared for those who love him things that no one has seen, heard, or imagined. But people want to figure it out because the issue is I want to be in control. Many people have fought with that idea all their lives. I want to be in control. I want to know what I'm going to do with my life. Certainly the Lord will tell you what to do and then you will do it. But you have to hear constantly because all, in all case, listen, there are moments when you need to change a little. Even in his plan. He will tell you what to do, where to go. But the key is that you love him. Do you love him? Don't answer. Just think about the question. Do you really love him? Or do you love somebody more than the Lord? Or do you love something more than you love the Lord? Watch out, because those are idols. We need to love the Lord over all people and over all things. He, the number one in our hearts. Ephesians 1.11. In Jesus Christ, we were chosen to be God's people. God had already planned for us to be his people. Because that is what he wanted. 
And he is the one who makes everything agree with what he decides and wants. He saw you. He knew you. And he felt, I want this person for me, for my kingdom. He chose you to be his people. Isn't it great? You, will be, you should be right now clapping your hands and saying, hallelujah, he chose me. I am excited about it. I just, I'm so grateful he picked me. He selected me. He chose you. He said, I want you to be mine. That is what he wanted. And you know what? He is the one who makes everything agree with what he decides and wants. That's why many people are growing and being prosperous and being blessed because that's the Lord's plan for you. He wants to give you everything. And some people are wondering, sometimes they are broke and sad and in trouble, They're wondering what, what is the difference between me and these people? Well, the big difference is these people, they worship God and they love God over all things. And here, these other people, they don't. They want worldly things. You see, that's the big difference. People are looking after stuff. And when they go after the stuff, the stuff is moving farther and farther. Those here, they are looking after God. They want more and more of God. You know what happens? The stuff follows them. <laughs> the stuff comes after them. Because he is the one who makes everything agree with what he decides and wants. He's the authority in the universe. He knows what he can give you. Things that I have not seen, nobody have heard or imagined, are those for the people that love him. 1 Peter 1.2, God planned long ago to chose you, long ago, and to make you what? His holy people. Holy people. What, 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 is that, what is that supposed to mean, Gian? Explain that to me. Holy people? Do I need to wear a robe now or what? I need to change my attire? I need to wear sandals? Oh, I know. I heard about this particular lamp with uh, seven lights that I need to, to start using on Friday night and pray with a little blanket on my head. Oh, I heard that I need to walk on rock and fires and stuff like that. No, that has nothing to do with holiness. That's tradition that, uh, those are maybe good actions if you like, but holiness is simple, is that you dedicate your life to him, consecrated to him, dedicated to him, set apart to him. Again, here are the ones that loving God, they just want to please God. Here are the ones that do not love God, and they want to please their flesh, themselves. That's the big difference. And you have to see it. Because he made plans for us to be his holy people, which is the Spirit's work. You know? It's, it's not that we make ourselves holy. It's the Holy Spirit's work. The Holy Spirit working in your heart. It, this is the thing. When the Lord is talking to you and says... Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm talking to you. Don't do that. And, and if you go, and you do it anyway. But the Lord sometimes is telling you, I want you to go here. I want you to do this. And you are, and you don't do it. The Holy Spirit is working in you, but you make the final decision. However, his desire is for you to stop doing what is wrong and start doing what is right. God want, wanted you to obey him. You see that? That is his plan. I want to hear. I want to know God's plan for my life. No, no that's not true. People say, I really want to know what's God's plan for me in my life. That's not true. It's not what they really want. They say that, but they don't mean it. What they want to know is when they are going to get the money, when they are going to get the house, when they are going to get the business, when they can start uh, traveling around the world, spending the money that they made. That's what they mean by, I want to know God's plan. It has nothing to do with God's will for them. It's all about themselves. 
Me, 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 me. I want to know God's plan for my life. Really, your life. Your life? Did you, did you make yourself? Did you create yourself? We know the answer. No. God made us. He has a plan. And one of, one of his plans in this big plan is that you learn to obey him. Obey him. But that's the big deal inside of people. I want to know God's plan. Well, he wants you to obey him. Yeah, but, but tell me, what's God's plan? He wants you to be holy. Yeah, I know, but, but I want to know God's plan. <laughs> it's like talking here in this, in this ear, and the words are getting out from this other one. What's the point? Don't do that. They do it anyway. I want you to do this. They don't want to do it anyway. Holiness. Trusting. Obeying Him. And all that is because He made us clean by the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Do you think it was easy for the Lord to give His life? To pay that price? To die the way that He died? It wasn't. He gave his own life, you know, everything, until the last drop of blood, the spear that this soldier put in, into his body, it was just water coming down. There was no more blood, zero blood. Can you imagine that kind of death? And you are clean by that blood sacrifice. That is a price, my friend. But people say, but, but you, you don't know what I'm going through. It's true. I don't know what you're going through. But you are not giving your life for people. No, you are not. No, you are not. You just want to live for yourself. Stop it. Stop it. Well, God's got a plan. Okay? Stop thinking of yourself. Stop it. St just stop it. What is God's plan for your life? He wants you to be holy. He wants you to trust in Him. He wants you to obey Him. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Some were told the good news before they died. They were criticized by others in their life here on earth. But it was God's plan that they hear the good news. Our ancestors heard the word of God. Your great, 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 great parents, they heard the word of God. People in your line, where, where you descend from, they heard the, wo the voice of the Lord. They heard the word of God. They believed that. And you know what happened? They changed. They said, I'm going to stop this thing. I'm not going to continue doing what is wrong. I'm going to do what is right. And what happened? All their friends, they looked at them and said, so now you're going to do what we do? Really? So you're going to be a good boy now? <laughs> and our ancestor said, indeed, I'm going to do what is right. They criticized him. They mocked him. I, I don't know if you know stories about your ancestors being criticized or mocked by being believers. I don't know if you have heard, if you know anything about your ancestors. But I know the stories in my case. My ancestors. What people were telling my grandma, Olympia, because she decided to become a believer. The nicknames they gave her in that town. They made jokes out of her. And the same thing happened then to the next generation. And in my case, when I was a Teenager, just living la vida loca. And finally, the, my eyes were open. And I understood that I needed to give my life to the Lord. And when I switched that life from doing what is wrong to doing what is right, what happened to me? Everybody in my circle, they started laughing. They, they made, made me look ridiculous. And they say all kind of stories about me because now I didn't want to do what was Wrong, I just said, I want to do what is right. And that story will never stop. People always will criticize those who want to do what is right. Are you afraid of them? Do you really care what do they think about you? Who cares? Who cares? They give you life? No. 
Do they save you? No. Will they help you in the future? No. God is the only one who will help you. So we need to give our lives to the Lord and get it right. That is his plan. Now listen to this in Revelation 10, 7. In the days when the seventh angel is ready to blow his trumpet, God's secret plan will be completed. The good news that God told the servant, his servants, the prophets. It's going to be a time, my friends. It's going to happen in the future. One day, we just don't know when. But the whole story revealed in the scripture, especially in Revelation, is going to be completed. The trumpet of the angel, the announcement that the Lord Jesus will come back, the second coming. That is God's plan. That's why he wants you to trust him. He wants you to obey him. He wants you to be clean and holy for him. That is why, because it's his plan. It's not about this world. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Everything was going so well, but you just messed it up. You just destroyed Gian. I don't like that. It's all about eternity then, so this world doesn't mean anything to God. No, it's not what I mean. The main goal is eternity. But again, when you are searching God and seeking God and looking after Him, the rest of the things are going to come behind you. They will follow you. Because you are not putting too much emphasis into those things or people. Put your eyes on the Lord. That is God's plan for you. God is, that is God's will for you. You surrender, you serve Him, and then He will move things. Everything is going to work in agreement for you. Every day, every day there is a struggle, a huge struggle of fear, struggle of lack of certainty. What is going to happen? What is going to happen with my life? What is going to happen with this and that? What is what you do? You pray. You pray something like this. I trust you, Heavenly Father. I'm not going to be afraid of anything, Lord. I trust you. I'm giving you my whole heart today. You know what is best for me, Lord. I don't know. I'm confused. Right now, I'm lost. I don't know where to go, but I trust you, Heavenly Father. You know what is best for me. You will take care of my future. What is the right decision here? I really don't know, Father. Where should I go to get this or that? I really don't know, but I trust you. Because you know what's best for me. You take care of my future, Lord. And Father, you take care of my health. You take care of all these things going on in my body, in my mind. Lord, you take care of my health. And you take care of my family as well. Some days, Father, I'm concerned about my family. Some days I think about their future, their lives. But there is a promise, Lord, that you will bless my descendants if I trust you. You take care of my family, Lord. You take care of my provision, Father. Because your plan is to give me what I need. So I'm not going to be here worried about anything. You will provide what you want me to have. You take care of my provision, Lord. And Father, when I get old, you will take care of me. You will take care, Father. Of my old age. Today, Lord, I am going to trust you. You know what's best for me. You take care of my future, my provision, my health. And of course, Lord, you will take care of my old age. And Father, when the time comes, when I will be ready to go to heaven, I know you will take care of my last days. I'm not going to be worried about anything, Lord. I just trust you, Lord God. I trust you, Father, today. You know what's best for me. You take care 
of me, my life, my health, my provision when I get old and especially in my last days. On those days, Lord, you will take care of me. And Father, when I transition and I get into heaven and I step into eternity, you will take care of me out there, Lord. You will take care of me, Father. Because you are a good, good Father. And I don't worry about anything, Lord. I decide, Lord, that I'm going to trust you. Because you know what's best for me. You take care of me. You take care of my health. You take care of my family. You take care of my provision. You take care of my old age. You will take care of my last days. You will take care of my eternity. I don't worry about anything. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to be frightened. I refuse to be worried. I refuse to be concerned about anything. I don't worry about anything. Never again. I trust you, Heavenly Father. My job is to trust you, Lord. All that I do is trust in you every single moment of my life. I trust you, Lord. And I will do your will. But I need to listen to your voice. Help me to listen to your voice, Lord. Because I really don't know what to do here. And I know you have something for me. But I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm not worrying. I'm trusting you. But I need to listen to your voice. And I need to obey you, Father. I need to obey you. I'm tired of doing my, my own decisions. I'm tired of doing things my way. I'm tired of that, Lord. I need to surrender. I need to obey you, Lord. I want to obey you, Lord. And when you are speaking to me, Lord, and you are telling me what to do, I must pay careful attention. I need to write down these things you are telling me, Lord. Because you are giving me orders about my life. That's your plan, Lord. That's your plan. Your plan for me, Lord, is that I trust you every day. Because you know what's best for me. You will take care, Father, of my future, of my health, my provision, my old age, my last days, my eternity. I need to listen to you, Lord. I need to obey you. Help me to write your orders about my life. And must, I need to pay careful attention about those details. Because I need to do exactly what you say. Then is when my life is safe, Lord. When I hear your voice and you give me the orders and I do exactly what you say. To trust you, Lord, every second of my life. Because you have a plan. Even if I don't see it or understand it, I know you have a plan. You have a wonderful plan for my life, Lord. And I don't get it. I'm clueless. You are giving me orders and I want to follow those orders. One at a time. But I know that there is something bigger there. You have a plan. And I don't see it. I don't understand why all these things are happening to me? I don't know. But you have a plan, Lord. You have a plan and I trust you. Because my life is in your hands. It's not my life. It's your life. My life is in your hands. What I am is because of you. Therefore, I will live only for you. For you only, Lord. To please you, Lord. I want to please you, Lord. Every day with my life and my actions. I want to please you with my thoughts. I want to please you with my words. I want to please you with my motives. I want to please you with everything I am. I want to please you, Lord, every single day. In every single action that you will be happy with me, Lord, because I trust you. Give your life to God. Give your life to Him. Open your heart. Surrender. Stop fighting against the Lord. Stop fighting this fight within yourself. What is right? What is wrong? Stop it. Stop it. Just surrender. Open your heart to Him. Open your heart to Him. And just say, God, I really want to change. 
There is a prayer in the screen. Read it with me. Dear God, I need you, Lord. Please forgive me for all my sins. I open my heart to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I surrender to you. I know that you will guide me every day. In the name of Jesus. He will guide you. Because he loves you. Love him back. Give him your heart. Trusting in him. That is his plan. Say with me. I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. Therefore, I can also declare my life is going to be great and blessed this year, 2020. Hallelujah. Receive the blessing from the God Almighty. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May that blessing make you shine among the nations. Have a beautiful weekend, and I'll see you next Sunday. Anytime Amen. my heart turns from dark to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know. Victory Church. We hope you enjoyed the video.